The security of near-field communication is also based on the assumption that there aren't any people around who would want to read your card. In this case, around means in the radius of up to 3 centimeters. The new release of Backtrack includes a set of tools for attacking both Bluetooth networks and NFC devices. These tools are capable, for example, of duplicating proximity cards. If on a train or bus your card is placed within 3 centimeters from a device that can read cards, an attacker can use this to duplicate the credentials saved on your card and use them without any control. Remember that there are no built-in security solutions in NFC. You can physically control medium access, provided that the medium is physical. You can, for example, monitor network cables and switches and in this way prevent unauthorized connections to your wired network. This security technique is practically impossible with wireless LANs. Usually, to be able to connect to an access point, you have to be up to 100 meters away from the AP. This is dependent upon the used antenna. The bigger it is, the better. A directional antenna can be used to reach an access point that is 100 kilometers away. This distance means that a potential intruder can attack your network even from another city or another country. Despite this, he can logically connect to your business flan. What can you do to reduce this risk? Internet standards organizations puzzled over this problem in 1999. The web standard was ratified in that year. We'll come back to that later. The ratification of WEP made a lot of people sigh with relief. There's a ready privacy solution providing security that is equivalent to that of wired networks. You can now control medium access. This illusion of security was shattered two years later by Peter Shipley at a DEF CON convention. Shipley started the word driving trend. This attack method consisted of searching for VLANs during recreational walks, drives, rides, or even flights with a running laptop equipped with a Wi-Fi card. There used to be geolocation maps on the internet that revealed the presence of VLANs. Today, internet access in many countries is practically everywhere, and it's often free. This wasn't the case 15 years ago. The DEF CON lecture also brought positive effects as it highlighted the problem of wireless network security. Since we can't control medium access, we should above all focus on ensuring the confidentiality and authenticity of data exchanged over wireless networks. The diagram in the picture above shows which OSI model layers can be protected with security implementations. You can remember from previous lectures that the lowest layer that can be efficiently protected is the network layer. IPsec can be implemented in the third layer. IP version 6 has its protocol as a default component. Unfortunately, the layer is too high. We would have needed to control medium access and ensure the authenticity and confidentiality of data even lower. This is when WEP protocol and its successors, WPA2 and WPA, were developed. WPA and WPA2 are completely dissimilar technologies and protocols. WPA was introduced because WPA2 was too good for its times. The majority of devices used at the time were incompatible with its technology. To make people move away from WEP, WPA was introduced. The standard is compatible to some extent with WEP. Most older devices that were designed with WEP security in mind could run with WPA, but not with WPA2.